Hey, it's Johnny Jet. Welcome back to my podcast YouTube channel. Please subscribe. This is my third interview with Jules Older, who is based in New Zealand. He's an American. He moved down there in August of 2020 when things hit the fan. He wrote a really nice post about it. By the way, did you post that somewhere that you sent me? Oh, I think the most recent thing I sent you, I'm trying to post somewhere. Okay. Well, I'm happy to put it in my newsletter if you want it. Oh, great. Thank you. If you can sell it to somewhere else, sell it, make some money. But anyway, um, it's nice to um, to have you back. I know two weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago today, we did this um, chat. It was our second update because I hadn't spoken to you for almost a year. And, you know, you were talking about how great it is there. That we haven't been in lockdown. There's no COVID. And literally two days later, the first case pops up. The prime minister, who's amazing, goes into a, I think a snap lockdown right away. Cause you guys been controlling it, but I think it's spread. So how are you doing? And are you in total lockdown? Let's start with, Oh, there's so many places to start here, right. Johnny. Let's see American. I'm actually American and New Zealand citizen. We lived here for many years in the seventies and eighties. And thank God took out citizenship. Right. So we have dual citizenship, which is why we're allowed to be back here now. And you're a professor. I actually received some comments on my YouTube from ex-students saying, he was my professor. I loved him. Uh, that was t- I saw them very touching to me, really touching to me. Right. So what, what were you a professor of? Well, I, I designed and ran a, the behavioral science course, a strange name for a course, at uh, the world's southernmost medical school, the University of Otago in South Island, New Zealand. And uh, it was really a course in what I call the ology, psychology, anthropology, sociology, and a lot of other stuff. Uh, the human and sciencey side of medicine that's not the physical science side. That's it. I see. So how are you doing right now? You're in lockdown. It's been I guess almost two weeks, correct? Or 12 days? August 17th. And uh, by the way, uh, we're getting blamed for this lockdown. That is you and I. I heard. We jinxed it. Yeah. I said, oh, we don't have any lockdown. You said, oh, that's so good. Yeah, right. We're yeah. definitely getting blamed for this. Yeah. Uh, I had to put a hat on because I don't like seeing my bald head on. on I was just screen. admiring it. So. Well, never mind. <laughs> um, yes. We, so, we got one case in the community, one. And they come from Australia? Yes, there's a story here too. So um, we had mercy flights essentially from Australia for a very limited period. And I wrote to the prime minister when this was announced. And I said, Ms. Jacern, this is a mistake. Do not do this. You're bringing in people with very little credentials of why, how much contact they've had from New South Wales, that includes Sydney, which is filled with this plague of COVID. And they did not, not, I have no idea whether I had any influence at all, but they changed their mind to a large extent and made it made them go into quarantine. So the that mercy was, flights, they weren't making them go into quarantine? No, they were going to waltz them in here on their pledge that they hadn't been any place. Well, that's, that's ridiculous right there. I, I mean, New Zealand's been doing everything so smart. How could they do something yeah. so idiotic if they're going to, if they're going to seal the borders, which, you know, I don't know if a lot of people know this. So if you're joining for the first time, when you, when you flew down from San Francisco, yeah. You were quarantined for how many days? 14 or 12? No, 14 days of strict, it, it's called here isolation, strict isolation in a hotel, a very nice hotel by the airport. It was extremely pleasant, but if you wanted to leave, you could not. There were guards there and fences there, and that's where you were for two weeks until they, you showed that you were clear of COVID. Then welcome to the totally open community. Right. which was totally open until the day you and I talked. And you couldn't leave your room except for an escorted walk around the property once a day or, or a, you, you not escorted, but guarded. And no, it was escorted, oh. essentially guarded, but pleasant guards. It wasn't uh, like we talked to them and 
chat with them and get their life histories and they'd ask us about ours. It wasn't uh, militaristic at all, but it was very thorough. But you could walk around the hotel, go to the pool. Walk around the hotel. You could not visit anyone's room. You could only walk around the hotel to actually get okay. to the main desk. You couldn't wander around your card or anything like okay. that. Because Australia has very strict quarantine as well. So that's why I was surprised they had so yeah. many cases because, you know, so many Australians are trying to get into Australia, but they can't because they only allow so many people because of the strict quarantine. You get off the airplane and say you can't even leave your room. Yeah, that's right. You can't there, even open the door of your room without a mask on. The, the rules are entirely different there, including the, the thing to know about Australia is this. Unlike New Zealand, which is essentially one small country with a few islands right. connected by a central government. It's four million uh, people in New Zealand. Um, we have about five million. OK. Australia has 25 very strong states and a weak federal government so that the states really control much more what's happening there. So for example, some Australian states, states, New South, uh, no, um, Western Australia, right. Queensland, Tasmania, handling this as well as New Zealand brilliantly. The biggest state, New South Wales, Sydney, the sophisticated city has a woman in charge who is handling it very badly. And the prime minister of Australia, Scott Morrison, I don't like to use the word, he's a dope, but he's handling it as though he were a dope. So COVID, big thing, business, that's the real, and both of them use this line and they're wallowing. Right, in but but, terrible, if he, but if he's pro business. Then why is, does he have these strict quarantines? I mean, here in America, there's oh. no quarantines. It's just like, you know, you can't uh, even tell that there's a virus going on in the, most places. The reason that they have strict quarantines now is be, is largely because they have a, such a horrible mess now. New but they, South but Wales, they did it in the beginning, though, as well. New South Wales has more than a, a thousand cases a day. We're going crazy with a, a dozen cases. I think we had 330,000 yesterday. Something ridiculous. You see, this drives me crazy. That My, my favorite American place is um, what the Sturgis, South Dakota. Yeah. You know about this. Yeah, of course, they just had the big motorcycle rally and then there was giant a giant motorcycle rally. Huge and they went, coming out. Uh, yeah, they went from 650 active cases in this small area to 3,655. 3, I mean, it's ridiculous. Their numbers went crazy. And what when I say ridiculous, it means anyone with half a brain could predict exactly what was going to happen and it happened. Right. Same thing happened in New South Wales. Despite their their prevention of people coming in from the outside, they let everything flow on the inside. And again, with this pro-business talk, that to me is the essence of anti-business, because when people are dead, they can't actually make your pizza. Right. Although if you own a funeral home, you're doing pretty well. You are doing well. Yeah. Or a hospital. So maybe hospitals are there's been walkouts there of medical staff who say we can't take it anymore. Yeah. This is preventable. You didn't prevent it. And you're just we're just dying in this mass of people coming in. Right. No, it's very bad in New South Wales. And again, very good in other parts of Australia. Right. So. Let's talk about New Zealand and how, Good, how, how are you doing? So when you found out there was one case, yeah. and, and so did you get an alert on your phone? Did you say there's a, did it say lockdown, go home? Or how did, how, how did it happen? I didn't get it on my phone. You got it everywhere. And it just said lockdown starts at midnight tonight. And what time was it when you got it? Morning oh. or don't don't know but let's say it was noon and by the midnight that night 
this, the country, the entire country was locked down from one case. So does everyone just run to the supermarket and are the lines out yes. the door? Yes. Gas stations. Exactly. I guess the gas station doesn't matter because you don't need yeah. gas. Yeah, uh, supermarkets more. Um, I'm not even sure if your gas stations are open. They may be, but supermarkets are open. Doctor's offices are open and very little else is open. So could you go to the supermarket right now? Could go to the supermarket in a few different ways. Uh, my big supermarket, Pack and Save, um, you could, I would never go in there now because it's full of people trying to buy toilet paper. Uh, but you can get them to pack it up for you and have it waiting for you. Okay. As you, so well, we, do we, they limit the amount of people in there like they did in America? Definitely. So there's lines so we, at the we door. Go to, we go to a smaller place now and um, there's somebody at the door with a hand wash and mask on. You've got to have a mask on and you, it'll be about 15 minutes there are some people ahead of you. They very much limit the number going in. Yes. And do they care what kind of mask you're wearing? Can it be a cloth mask or do you have to have a, you know, a, a really I've seen no mask? restrictions on masks. I see. Yeah. Okay. And so was there panic? Well, like when they're like, you know, is everyone just, is, was there, were there shelves empty? I think we were pretty well prepared for it. Okay. Because we've been through this before, this, the sharp, lockdown is something that defines New Zealand in these plague days. And uh, I know I've seen no sign of panic at all. Okay, good. I mean, I think that's one thing that um, COVID has taught a lot of people is to make sure that you, you're you stocked up on a lot of the goods. You know, we have, yeah. we now have a whole thing of toilet paper, paper towels, sure. tissues, and, you know, pasta sauce. Pasta, pasta sauce. Yeah, and pasta. I mean, we have a, you know, we have basically have one, box of everything so okay but th since this happened something there's something new the because of the lockdown and because it's been accepted by almost everybody in the country there are a couple of exceptions including the queenstown mayor uh, who sounds like the prime minister of australia because we accept this it hasn't ballooned so the only cases are in Auckland, which is where I live, a few, very few in Wellington, none in the South Island, none in Stewart Island, none in, and so the rest of the country is about to go into level three, down from level four. So the whole country not locked down, the, the, not just the North Island, the whole country oh, locked down. Lo it's still locked down. Even though it was just one case in Auckland. Started with one case, yes, but, lockdown. But now, but now you have, how many cases are there? It, it blossomed to 300 or something? 350, say. Probably a few. By tonight, I would guess we'll get to 400. And But none of them are in the South Island? So none of them are in any of the towns in gotcha. the North Island other than Auckland and wow. a few in Wellington. Okay. Most come from a church meeting, sadly. And it was... Be, it wasn't just a Sunday service. It was a meeting of all the churches of this denomination, the leaders of it, to go back to their communities and say whatever the leaders had decided. And, and, and what, yeah, the, what denomination? Uh, I don't know, but it's a largely Samoan church. Wow. So, so are they anti-vaxxers or anything? No, they're, they're not anti-vaxxers. In fact, they, the uh, Polynesian community here has been getting tested uh, much more than the, the Pakeha, the white folks community. Um, and they are now getting vaccinated at a good rate. They weren't at first. Many speak limited English, including in this church. So there was this, it was a spreader situation. It was the kind of thing that you wished hadn't happened and Jesus didn't help them and they spread it to their communities, which happily for the rest of the country, we're all in Auckland. Wow. Not happy for us. Right. I, I understand.
but they're Samoan. They're not. They're not Maori. There are Samoan. No, no Samoan. Not Maori. Yeah, gotcha. And we have a big, big. This is the biggest Polynesian city in the world. Is it? Oh yeah. Because of Samoans, Fijians, or Cook the Islanders. Fijians are, aren't technically Polynesian. They're Melanesian, but okay. Samoa, Cook Islands, which uh, area you know very well. Um, Cook the, Cook Islands are. Are, Poly are Polynesian. Oh, oh yes, er everything except Fiji is. I got gotcha. you. We uh, and it, they're all in, in Nui. They all Tonga flock to. Um, oh, sure. They all flock to Auckland. Wow. And, and it, it makes the city much richer and much more interesting. I bet. So, are the hospitals full? No, hospitals are not full. Okay, good. Unfortunately, here in America. There are in a lot of a lot of cities, destinations, especially the South. Again, a sharp, full lockdown. In other words, a confident government with the support of the people prevents that sort of thing from happening, actually diminishes the chances of it happening. So we've been lucky and skillful here. So, but how about the New Zealanders who are watching TV in America? I mean, I assume you get, do you get CNN or Fox News? Do they oh, get, it works, yeah. And, you know, they must be watching some of these channels going, what, there's no virus going on in America? Uh, why, aren't oh. we, why aren't we doing the same thing? I, maybe it's the people I hang out with. No one I know thinks there's no virus in America. The opposite. Right. What's the matter with these people? Why aren't they, re, why aren't they doing what we're doing? Right. The, things have eased on that since the last election. But under, in the Trump years, when Trump and coronavirus were cohabiting, uh, it was one, I get questions every day, what the hell is going on there? Right. To which I replied, I'm, I'm here, dude, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to Johnny Jett from Auckland. Yeah. So any idea how long you're gonna be in lockdown and what is, what is yeah. your day like? Let's start with how long we're going to be. The rest of the country goes out of out of level four to level three, which means takeouts available. Takeouts are very big here. You can't get takeout now. Absolutely not. You wow. can't get anything from a restaurant now. Wow. On Wednesday morning, there will be a lot of pizza and a lot of pies. We love our pies here in the rest of the country. Your meat pies, uh, and, not and apple pie. coffee, which we're crazy about here. People are longing for their cafe coffee. Wow. But not in Auckland. Auckland, at least another two weeks. Is it? Yeah. So, and how often do you go to the grocery store? Uh, when we start running out of food and it's a quick trip, double mask, uh, in and out, and spaced in the store. Do you have, but you said they'll pack it up for you. Do you have, still have to yeah. go in or do they bring it right to the car? Because we have a small, nice grocery store near us, Effen goes in, my wife goes in there, picks it up. But we could do click and collect and come at, on Tuesday afternoon at 2.30 in the after, you know, that kind of thing. And collect it from but it. But you, still have, to, you still have to go inside. They won't come just... No, no. Them. Click and collect is outside. Okay, good. So what's my day like? Well, I'm a writer. <laughs> my day is like my ordinary day. Um, I sit at my computer a lot. Uh, I talk to people a lot. And once a day, we go out for exercise, which in our case is brisk walk with striding poles uh, up the local volcanic mountain. And when I say mountain, do not think Everest. This is an easy walk. But it's a chance to get outside. Whenever someone passes us, we get off the path. If they're wearing a mask, we get not wearing a mask, we get fully off the path and take a walk and, and see people with their dogs and their kids. Are you supposed to be wearing a mask outside? For, for You're weeks? supposed to be wearing a mask outside and inside, and not in your own house. Right. Um, and we wear it whenever we pass anybody. If we were in a busy place, we'd always wear it. Right. Like in the grocery store. But on the mountain, most of the time, there's no one there. So I 
take my mask down and when someone comes put it back up and, and do they do the same some are wearing masks some not wearing masks some look like they're wearing two or three masks and others i wish the hell were wearing some kind of protection for me as well as them right and you know here in los angeles in my community you know i, I go for daily walks and you know if someone's on the sidewalk you know the other person will go on the street and yeah i mean rarely do we walk by each other um, so when you walk is it a lots of people around you or is it what i've described here uh there's not a lot of people around okay. so but you will pass a few people along the way yeah this, that sounds just like here but and, I, and I mean this is just this my, my neighborhood i mean you go down to the beach and there's tons of people on the strand no and... you're not allowed on the beach here essentially no so you could can you go for as many walks as you like or is it just one a day no no many as you like can you hang out in your front yard all day long yes and you can ride your bike up the mountain too as people do so you just really can't go to there's no place to go besides for a walk right in a grocery well, store I mean, once in a while unlike you we're used to going to everywhere so i was at a all blacks rugby game just before lockdown and no one's wearing a mask no no there was no COVID. Right. and then a few days later uh, as you know right okay so and do you think this strategy is going to keep going they're yes. going to keep blocking out I mean, how I long? Hope. How long can they go? How long can they do it for? Because Australia just announced that they're going to start, or Qantas, the Australian airline, said they're going to start doing international flights in December, which was surprising. We find a lot from Australia surprising. Yes, <laughs> um, we are going to keep it up. I think as long as that's what's required to keep us safe. That, and, that is my belief in this government. And since you guys are on opposite seasons than us, yeah. how 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 was your uh, your flu season? Did you have a lot of flu? Because I know the year before Australia had no flu season, and so we didn't. And then it turns out we didn't have any flu season. So I'm, we're about to go into our flu season. So I'm curious how New Zealand did. Do you have any idea? I don't. And if it, we'd had a serious one, I would know. Okay. But I, we got our flu shots as, as you got yours. Right. The world gets their flu shots now. Right. I think COVID shots are coming to be the same thing. Unfortunately, it's starting to seem like yeah. it. I just yeah. wrote I just wrote a tip today for my newsletter. Yeah. Um, that Austria and Croatia are now requiring um, you to have been vaccinated within the last nine months. So if you got vaccinated. 10 months ago, you can't get in. And Switzerland has something similar. They're one year. But I think the more and more countries learn about um, the efficacy, I can't, efficiency, I can't even say the word, efficacy yeah. of vaccines, you know, that time could go down to six months. Who knows? So um, my tip was to people, make sure you find out what the requirements are before you arrive in the country because they're like, okay, look at your CDC card. It says you were vaccinated 10 months ago and you needed it something sooner. So there's going to be boosters. Well, here's something that has really surprised me. Um, I'm a travel writer and nobody's traveling, especially where, where I live. And a wonderful cruise company has said, we want some articles on New Zealand. And I said, are you aware? We're aware, but we don't think it's going to last forever. So I, I actually submitted my first one day before yesterday. They're not going to use it now. I There's see. no cruise ships here. Right. But they expect there will be. And I, in the future, I'm sure they're right. And Almost. What, sure. And what do the uh, health officials in New Zealand think? Do they think that, you know, coming into your summer do you think it's going to get a lot better what, what are they saying are they or they think it's going to be here for years well remember there until recently there was no COVID here right but so, your, but your borders were still shut so oh, and borders are still shut i there's been no talk of opening the borders except in the very limited way that we've had them open so we had open borders with australia that's closed tight but if 
Australia figured out a way to keep parts of it safe, you could let people in from, from say, area, uh, from Western SA. Australia. Right. But right now, that's not the case. Right. We are we are safe with many of the places in Polynesia, including the Cook Islands. Um, and as long and they're safer than we are. They have no cases there. So did they, they shut? Right they shut their borders? I assume. Uh, they, the Cooks, the Cooks? New Zealand. Yeah. There's no bubble right now between the Cooks and New Zealand during this I'm lockdown. Not, I actually think the Cooks stopped it recent be, when this one right. case hit. Well, you would think but, uh, it will open up again. Yeah, I feel confident. About it. Okay. Well, Jules, I appreciate the update. I wish you the best. Maybe um, maybe this time we will get you out of the lockdown instead of getting you into it. That would be really good. <laughs> I, I, on behalf of New Zealanders who obviously read your column a lot, we all thank you for that. Oh, well. It's always good to talk to you. I, I really miss being in New Zealand. Uh, you know, I love the people, number one. The people are amazing. The nicest people in the world. I've told someone... I think I told us the first time I we did this that I went to a resort that was owned by a billionaire, a billion with a B, and he picked me up at the airport, came into the airport, carried my bag, drove me home, and his wife made me dinner. Now, if you had a billionaire in America who you were going to yeah. visit, I can promise you they will not be picking you up, their wife will not be cooking you dinner, and you would and and you will know that they're billionaires. These guys you wouldn't know, so. It's amazing. That, that, one, that just shows you that the Kiwis are really, truly special people. Let me double down on that story. On, on one of our flights to New Zealand, when we were visitors visiting our family here, uh, we get in at six in the morning, as you know, on Air New Zealand, Auckland Airport, everybody's groggy. Effen grabs her suitcase and bumps into another woman, says, oh, I'm sorry. And the woman says, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, she grabs her suitcase. It's the prime minister. Wow. Helen Clark. Wow. The last the, woman. The, the old, minister. the last prime minister. Yeah. Before. We've, had, we've had three women prime ministers. Here. Right. Amazing. Well. Yeah. I, I can't imagine um, any American president having to or wanting to pick up his own bag, but she did it just like everybody else in line. Right. This is, to me, amazing and wonderful. Yes. Well, congratulations on you making that move. Thanks, I do man. hope that it does ease and that the borders open and we can crisscross between there and here often. Let me just end by saying what we say here. Stay safe, stay smart, and stay kind. I think you do all three. Well, thank you. I try. I really do. All right, Jules. Take care. See ya. Bye -bye.